This is an explanation of essential question three right up here. Um, the format has changed significantly from previous years, so I thought it was a good idea to show you some of the new features. Uh, first off, um, the assets are always going to be shown over here as a row. They're labeled A, B, C, D. And note they're not necessarily in any particular order. Uh, there are some circumstances where you want to order these by internal rates of return, some circumstances when you want to order by initial costs. The initial costs are right here. Also, I no longer show you all the payoffs, or sorry, all the cash flows for the assets, merely its initial cost, and then I tell you how long it lasts. That's it. Uh, in some of the cases, uh, these asset lies, um, they'll have a couple of duplicates. This one does not. Uh, also, what I've done is made it so that I've calculated the present worth for you at 10% for all the assets, so you don't have to do any calculations like that. I've also calculated the internal rates return for all the assets except for asset A. Calculating the internal rate of return on asset A is actually question number one. That's the reason why I don't do it for you. This right here is supposed to be the incremental internal rates of return between a couple of different assets. Um, so it's described up here uh, as the incremental rate of return between the row asset moving to the column asset. So if you look at this spot right here, which is 104.49%, this is the incremental internal rate of return of going from A to C. You'll notice that the matrix is symmetric. If you go from C to A, it also has 104.49%. The uh, part that's different uh, between the two of them are these infinities over here. Um, and so you'll notice that if you have a positive infinity, it just means the column is better than the row, as stated way up here. And down here, it just means the column is worse than the row. Usually this has to do with there being no real root for it. I've also included a couple of present worth uh, equations right here. You can decide which ones you want to use. Looking at the first question, as we said before, I'm asking you to calculate the internal rate of return on asset A. Um, it gives you what the benefit in the future is and also when it takes place. Uh, the key will show you how to calculate these things. The second question is uh, one of the ones where you have a certain required service life. Uh, so it's intended to do something like, say, over a 12-year period by one of asset C, let it burn out, get another one of asset C, let it burn out, and so on down the line. Um, you'll see in the key that this is usually a good indicator that you're looking at the annual worth criteria. And I've rigged it so that all of the asset lives are factors of the planning horizon. This one right over here uh, has to do with no service life, and this is kind of a simple present worth criteria. The last one, please note that the minimum acceptable rate of return has changed. Uh, frequently it'll be 20%, sometimes it'll be 15% or something else. It is critically not 10, which means that you can't do something as simple as look at this present worth and say, oh, it's this one. So it requires you to do the incremental internal rate of return procedure. When you get these back, there will be a, uh, a key listed up there and shows you, again, calculation details on how to calculate the internal rate of return for the asset. It also shows you calculation details, how to get to annual worth, how to use the annual worth criteria and have these numbers listed. Please note in your answers, you're supposed to show the numbers, not just put down a letter A, B, C, D. You have to explain why. Similarly for question number three, same kind of response. Uh, again, um, you have to explain the criteria, not just put down a letter. You got to explain how you got there. And then finally, this incremental internal rate of return procedure is all here. Uh, so this is the one where you have that do while loop and you all made the promise that you weren't actually going to use this outside the classroom. Um, so make sure you follow the steps and give kind of an explanation. Um, there's also an arrow notation that you can see on some of the past keys and actually that's a good way of showing it. It's easier for me to see that. But please write out what you're doing. Uh, don't just assume I can figure out what you're doing because I will always come from the assumption that you don't know what you're doing and you're supposed to make the case that you do. Good luck on your essential questions.